Hello everyone, Pally Tom here and welcome back to the channel. BlizzCon 2019 is going on right now over in California and they have finally announced Diablo 4. I mean, everyone already knew it's been in the works for a long time and, and we've had so many leaks that everyone was just expecting it, but it just feels good to have it acknowledged, you know? It feels good that it's just out in the open now. As far as when we're gonna be able to get our hands on the final product, they said the release was not soon, like not even Blizzard soon. So don't get your hopes up too much. However, if you would like to know more, here's everything I learned from the Diablo 4 unveil panel at BlizzCon. Diablo 4 is going to take place decades after the Reaper of Souls. It will be much, much darker in tone than what we've experienced in Diablo 3. The world even looks more inhospitable than it did before. It's like Diablo 2, but brought up to the modern age with some really crisp visuals of, you know, blood and skulls and demons and everything else that probably wants to eat you for a quick snack. The game is going to take place decades after Diablo 3 did. And the stage was set by the following. Though Malthiel's plans were foiled, the Angel of Death exacted a terrible toll on humanity and sanctuary suffered great devastation. Entire populations devastated, cities ravaged, heaven itself suffered great losses, and they were forced to close their gates. Religious schisms, famines, war, humanity was left to their own devices. It is against this backdrop of despair that Lilith returns. In the mythos of sanctuary, Lilith is the mother of humanity. She represents the demonic half that we all have inside of our hearts. She, along with other rebel angels and rebel demons, tired of this endless conflict, created a place free of conflict called Sanctuary, along with the first mortals. She knows our hearts and she can manipulate us. By the way, she's also the daughter of Mephisto? Is no one worried about that? That gives her a link to even a greater threat, the greater evils. But she was summoned back into this world for reasons that developers were not ready to divulge quite yet. But we know it's up to no good. And we know there's no one that can answer humanity's prayers except for ourselves. We gotta get in there. Dude, that's actually pretty dope though. I like it. it like the, the trailer was really fucking cool. Like, good job, Blizzard. <laughs> I mean, maybe you should have released it last year, but good job, Blizzard. It looks real good. The world of Diablo 4 is said to be inspired more as a medieval RPG than a high fantasy one. You're not going to get elves in there because it's inspired by more occult themes. Victories aren't clean or guaranteed. Sometimes the evil guy just fucking wins. The world is going to be much more open this time, though, which gives the player more of a choice in which activities they would like to participate in while they're leveling up through the game. The campaign is said to be non-linear. You could take breaks and explore, do repeatable missions, or experience the story completely uninterrupted. In this open world, there will be five main regions for the player to explore, featuring icy mountains, dark forests, grasslands, deserts, and swamps, all with that dark Diablo twist that we know and love. Day and night cycles also change how each of these areas look as time progresses in-game. The borders of these regions are completely gone, leading me to believe that you can travel from one region to another completely seamlessly. Also, they mention that these regions are 10 to 20 times larger than any previous Diablo region. All of this is being brought to us on a brand new engine, and I know I'm not really talking about playable classes yet, but oh my god, these spells look so good when they're lighting up these deep, dark dungeons. Oh, it looks so good, dude. As you're going around the world, you're likely to stumble across a few quest hubs on your adventure. These are areas that, of course, NBCs will be handing out assignments for you to complete, but they're also social hubs bringing you together with other players. They said some really exciting things, and I'm just going to make sure that you hear me loud and clear here. They said that you can opt in for world PvP in the social hubs. World PvP. They also said that you could come to the social hubs and trade items. Damn, dude, it just took them a whole game to figure out what we wanted in Diablo 3. <laughs> you can also inspect other players' equipment and try to look for a group in these areas as well. There are some world events outside that require more than one person to defeat them, so working together may be a good idea. 
That being said, they did seem to stress that if you weren't interested in PvP or co-op, you could play the game by yourself too. Blizzard is pretty in tune with the play your way mindset, so it's good to hear. Now, when the game fully releases, there will be five playable classes. As of right now, we only know of three of them. The Barbarian, the Sorcerer, and the Druid. For the Barbarian, it seems like a lot of what we already know and love. They drew upon classic Barbarian imagery and past art from previous Diablo games. The Barbarian is focused on the physicality of being a warrior, but they also are paying close attention to how armed to the teeth Barbarians are usually portrayed. They actually made a brand new system. It's called the Arsenal System. It's going to be added to allow the Barbarian to have four weapons equipped at any time. They can use one-handed and two-handed weapons in the same build at the same time. Basically, the player is going to be able to assign which weapon they want to use for each of their equipped skills. And then as you use those skills, you'll just swap to this new weapon and start hitting them with it. This, of course, increases player build customization even more. We're going to talk more about customization later. I already know that because I wrote this script. But Fury is a resource, and they're also going to be using ancient magic from their ancestors to help them out on the battlefield. So I don't feel like too much is changing here from Diablo 3 except for this arsenal system. That sounds dope as fuck, dude. The Sorceress, or Sorcerer, if you're so inclined to play as a male... They just cast elemental carnage all over the battlefield. Those are their words, not mine. It's it's like, it sounds so cool. I mean, it's everything from chilling your enemies to lighting enemies on fire with fireballs or just turning yourself into a fucking ball of lightning and just going, just zooming around as a ball of lightning. Remember how I said some of the lighting effects look really cool in these dungeons? Like, come on, look at this. It seems like Sorcerer is going to have a lot of control over their enemies, like you can put blizzards or firewalls down to deny areas or zip right through areas as a, as a lightning bolt. Last but not least, the Druid. You know, I've never actually played a Druid, so I didn't have a horse in this race, but man, Druid looks cool. It's kind of funny, though, because there was so much speculation from the community that the Druid was going to be added into Diablo 3, and it turns out the devs weren't even originally going to add him into Diablo 4 either, until one of their artists came up with some dope concept art, and they were like, yo, add this in. And that made them change their minds. Like, how cool is that? The Druid's focus is going to be on storm magic as well as earth magic. They didn't want fire coming out of their hands. They didn't want them to seem like a sorcerer, so they have very distinct differences in the magic that they're using. And let's not forget, the Druid also has some companions by his side as well. He's got wolves and birds, and they said vines. Now, I've never looked at a vine and been like, yes, this is my best friend. I need this with me in battle. I mean, I get what they're saying. You could summon it from the earth, but calling that a companion, slow down. Of course, the druid is also able to shapeshift, very similar to, you know, wow, how druids can shapeshift in there. But they're going to be changing into were bears or were wolves, depending on the build or situation. They said a few times during the presentation that they wanted the combat to feel even better than the combat did in Diablo 3, which as someone who spent over a thousand hours of their life in that game, I'm really happy to hear. They're introducing something called fluid shapeshifting, which is going to allow the player to jump in and out of shapeshifting. <laughs> this is so hard to say. What the fuck? They're introducing something called fluid shapeshifting, which is going to allow the player to jump in and out of shapeshifted forms if they're looking to get more of a hybrid playstyle. So you're able to start casting an ability as a human, and then mid-animation you transform into an animal and charge in. And the example they did was, well, what if you're surrounded now? Well, you could summon in a boulder back in human form and then shift into a bear form and charge in. Like, it seems cool. Character customization as well is being taken to a new level in a bunch of different ways. For starters, you can select a different starting appearance, so not every level one barbarian is going to look exactly the same anymore. You could change things like your hair, your skin color, your jewelry, scars, and even your tattoos. Why not? Even more customization can be found once you start jumping into gameplay, though. Talent trees are returning rather than the skill swap rune setup thing that we had in Diablo 3. Along with this, there's also items found out in the world that can increase individual skill ranks and character passive ranks. What does this mean? You might pick up a stick one day that makes you better at casting Blizzard than you were able to do it before, and that may incentivize you to use that spell even more. They said that legendary items are going to be even more powerful than they were in the past. They want legendaries to be something you can customize your build around. In Diablo 3, a lot of the gameplay was focused on acquiring full sets of armor. 
which gave the player a lot of power. And they're still going to have sets in the game. They just want legendaries to be more of a focus than they were before. There's also something being added called Rune Words that are taken from Diablo's past games but giving a new, fresh interpretation. Rune Words will provide triggers and effects and will change how your character plays. Admittedly, they were very vague about this point and recommended checking out later panels for a better explanation. One thing they wanted to stress was we want you to play the build that is inside your head. Your idea of a Frost Sorceress may be completely different from mine, and they want both of those to be viable. I mean, that seems all fine and dandy, but I feel like at the end of the day, there's always going to be a build that's the best, and then players will gravitate towards that. Let's talk about Diablo 3 for a second. Rank 1 Greater Rifts is the best build, usually, and if you copy that build, you'll have more success than something you just threw together out of your inventory. Maybe I'm being a little too critical here. You guys can let me know what you think down in the comments. Oh, uh, did I mention they added mounts into the game? These things are also customizable. You could change what you hang on the side of your mount. I think their saddle and their armor, the look of the damn thing, it can look totally different. They got some like dead horses in here you can ride on. You can even dismount these in unique ways depending on your class that you're playing. Like they showed a barbarian exiting his mount and a sorceress exiting hers and completely different effects happening on the ground. Mounts, of course, will help you get around the map even faster. If these regions are as big as they say, this may just be a necessity. And of course, at the end of the day, there are going to be so many dungeons that you can't even wrap your head around it. And all of them are going to be procedurally generated so you never know what to expect. Well, this script is getting mighty long, and I think I've covered just about everything I learned from the first panel about Diablo 4 at BlizzCon. Holly and I, we're going to take a look at the rest of the event and report back with any more tantalizing news that we find. Thank you so much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed this first look at Diablo 4. I know I'm super excited, dude. Also, just a friendly reminder, on November 8th, we're doing a 24-hour charity live stream to raise money for sick kids in hospitals through the Extra Life Charity Foundation. If you would like to join us on twitch.tv slash mfpallytime, we'll be there for 24 hours playing games and having a good time, and I would love to have you there. Take care, everybody. See you around soon.